All right, hey. How's it going, everybody? <clears throat> and welcome to the uh, to the Ashland Leather Worldwide Headquarters. I'm trying to play my little video for you to make sure uh, everybody's seeing me here. Give me a thumbs up or tell me if things are sounding good. And uh, I'll give a couple people a couple minutes to uh, filter in here. But I've got a table full of crazy stuff to show you today. I think you might have seen the uh, preview of the irregular items. So we're going to go through those again. I want to answer any specific questions that you guys might have about any of the irregular items that go live in about an hour and a half. So if you want a closer look at the stuff before it goes up, that's a big purpose of what today's video is about. Waveland Avenue. What's up? You must be a Cubs fan, maybe? What's up, Marco? And Michael Cruz. Good to see you, Michael. I know uh, Jim Wiles has been waiting for like two hours for me to show up. Sound is garbage. Well, let me see if I can fix that. How are we sounding now? Is it garbled still? Let me know how this sounds. I've been having issues with audio for like the last year. <clears throat> bad, good, bad, good, terrible, garbled. Oh, darn. Well, how about this? No audio? <laughs> I don't know what to do. do this. I'll turn off the microphone if you think that would be better. And then I can just show you the stuff that we're shipping. And then if you have any questions, we can go over that stuff. Let's, uh, let's mute this. Yeah, I guess I'll leave it on unless it's like painful. Sorry about the audio, guys. I'll try to talk less than normal, but let's flip you around. I wanted to show you the uh, potential logo that we're going to use for the 10th anniversary stuff. Check this out. All right, not unbearable, <laughs> but not great. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'll have to figure out more audio stuff again later. But let's show you. Uh, let's show you the stuff that's that's shipping out. I couldn't not show this guy here. So check this out. This is a. Um, this is one of our vertical card slot orientations on a different wallet, though. But this is on the uh, tall Tony. We've only done a couple of these, but man, this one is super cool. So if you're familiar with the Tony the Ant, this one's like that, except the bill slot on this doesn't have a little thumb notch in the back. So it goes all the way, all the way up to the top. It looks like we got a nice little Orion measuring machine stamp in this one. But I've always loved the black and teal for a, a long time. And this wallet is super cool. So this is a tall Tony with vertical card slots on the inside. Going to a good friend of ours, Steven, Steven, see 
who hangs out in these videos sometimes. So hopefully you're seeing this before it gets to you, Stephen. And then I got all the, these are first things that we're going to show are things that are shipping out today, stuff that was ordered over the weekend. And then, you know, I've got all this stuff back here that's uh, the regulars. So if you had your eye on any of the regular stuff, or if you want to say like, hey, show me all the Herbies, let me know and I can give you better details of those. Again, all that irregular stuff goes live in an hour and a half. And usually when we do irregulars, they tend to sell really fast. So I want to give you, you know, the best opportunity to pick, you know, the thing that's right for you before they go up. But let's get into uh, more of the stuff that's shipping out. We've got a bunch of English tan Dublin. Oh, sorry about the audio. Awful. So English tan Dublin, Johnny the Fox here, 100%. And I sound like I'm swimming because I'm swimming in audio problems. <laughs> Here's another Dublin piece. This is the Bison English Hand Dublin, which has a little bit more intense grain character. And I think it's really cool. I'm so sorry about the audio. Let's try to not talk. <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me to not talk about the leather. And Tony the Ant in English Hand. Another Tony in English Tan. Here's a Herbie. This one is awesome. All right, we got more Herbies. Zach L says, if you want to carry about 14 cards with a Frank, the Enforcer, or Bugs Moran, be better. I would not use a Frank with 14, but I would definitely use a Bugs. This is a natural shell Herbie, which is really, really nice. Here's a natural Chrome XL Herbie. I like to compare them to different natural colors. the shell here and the chrome XL here. The chrome XL kind of looks like the color of waxes and oils. And it makes sense because there's no stains applied to this. This is just sort of like what those waxes look on a hide. Zach says, I need to replace a Phil's wallet that's falling apart. I really like the form factor of leaning towards a Frank, but wouldn't mind something that folds and slim. Well, we've got some Franks coming up in the video and some bugs. Um, you know, here, let me just show you a Frank now, I guess. So this is a Garnet Chill Frank. So there's one, two card slots on the front, the third on the back, and then there's a larger slot in the center here. So you could put a lot of cards in here, but the problem is, is once you start to put three or four cards in each slot, it becomes hard to put cash on the center here, like really, really difficult. I can't suggest this one for that many cards. You can do it. It just is not that easy to get cards in and out of. It tends to like make the wallet get a little wider when you put a bunch of stuff in there. It like expands it, or excuse me, it makes it a little bit more narrow. So imagine, you know, this was loaded up and it sort of pushes it out like this once you start to load it up and it becomes harder to get the cards in and out of. I don't really like to put more than two cards in each of these slots, to be honest. But that's a beautiful piece of garnet. Sorry again about the audio. Yeah, we're going to... Mike uh, Mike and Nicholas, we're going to go through the stuff that's shipping out today, and then I'm going to show everything that is in the irregular sale, and we can look at those in greater detail. This is another Frank in uh, natural Chrome Excel. And that comparison, the natural and whiskey, here's a, or excuse me, the natural uh, shell and the natural chrome XL, this is the natural shell. It's just like a little bit more vibrance. There's no additional irregulars from that preview video. So everything from the preview video is still what you're going to see here. There's no new inclusions. 
And uh, here's the Bugs Moran. So I like the form factor of this wallet very much. So I think it was Zach who was talking about wanting a slim form factor. And the Bugs Moran will hold, you, know, you could do four cards in each of these slots. So you could do 16. I like this one to carry a little bit more than the Frank. And I like it also because these larger card slots here, the ones underneath, you can fit US dollars folded in half quite well underneath there. So it's really versatile and super punchy. Like it's really compact. So if you like a front pocket wallet, this might be the way to go. And anybody that just showed up, I know the audio is bad. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to not talk. <laughs> um, check this out. This is a magenta shell two piece watch strap. And yeah, that's a denim blue uh, Frank. We have these, uh, we made a small batch of these Franks that are up on the site right now. It's a really, really nice blue shade. I strongly prefer this over the intense blue, which sometimes the intense blue can look kind of black. But this one has like a nice aqua to it. And check out this color though. <laughs> this is crazy. This is the magenta shell. Looks like I got a little wax on there. So this color is kind of like the ultraviolet, but even lighter and more pink. It's pretty cool. I actually really like the reverse side of the magentas and ultraviolets usually. Um, here's a really cool green wallet for J.A. Mason. Let me give this guy a little. Check out the color of this shell. It's like a really nice green shade and hopefully it's showing up properly on here but the interior on this guy that's ridiculous some more foxes this one a bunch of people picked up this particular wallet over the weekend and i'm really happy because they're so nice this is the 100 percent color rate shell fox the leather just so nice and we've been staining all the edges and i think it makes it a little bit more like formal looking by having this wax and stained edge and then all of the top to the card slots are also stained so i felt like on a wallet that's 100 percent cordovan in like a traditional style we should give it a little bit more of a traditional look with those that sort of stained edge and it uh, seems like people are re really digging this. Um, we got a bunch of these shipping out today. Here's another clean one for HC. And this is Black Dublin on the Giant Fox. And this has that black horse hide on the interior. All the edges are black, it's stealthed out. forgot about this one. Check out this shell. This is a marbled black and it's just so, so special. This is like one of the coolest pieces of black marble shell that I've seen. That's crazy. And this has a black horse hide interior. We originally weren't doing shell interiors at all because we had a hard time finding thin, like appropriately thin pieces of shell for the inside of the fox. So for a bunch of years, we were only doing this horse hide. And I like, I still like it a lot. It seems like people want a full shell wallet. These are less expensive and thinner, which is why I like them. Uh, so this is a great giant of the fox. I think this is a special order. Uh, I'm not sure who picked this up, but that's a really awesome. That you're going to be really happy with that. Here's another cool fox. So this is, an, again, a denim blue. Got a little bit of dust on it. But the denim blue has a really nice vividness. It's like kind of aqua at some angles and a little bit more, you know, uh, navy at other angles. And this one has a great 
reverse interior. This is a black reverse interior. So you can see this is the black shell here. The reverse side of the black shell is this sort of greenish tan color. Do you hear the geese? <laughs> the weather's getting good in Chicago, so we got wildlife again. <laughs> it's like we live in a wasteland during the winter. Check out this piece of black shell. This is a really, really, really nice piece of shell. And hopefully you can see it. But the way I can tell that it's nice, it just, just has this perfectly smooth look. If I tilt it slowly, you should be able to see the smoothness of it. It has that really bright, shiny luster. And the feel is really, really rich. It has a nice roundness to it, to it but it's not soft. It's very interesting how um, the cordovan and uh, a lot of the horween leathers tend to have this thing where they're firm and soft at the same time, which is awesome. It's really hard to explain, but you know when you get this in your hand, you sort of notice it what I'm talking about right away. And this one has a black shell on the inside. This is a special order also with no logos. And the customer wanted CWP etched in there. So that's a same thing with the uh, stained edges here. This is a really nice Johnny the Fox. Oh, we got a couple Tonys. Here's another, uh, I think it's another black shell Tony. And again, the shells that Horween's been selling us are very, very, very nice. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to think that we're special and we get the good stuff, but I think all their stuff is turning out really well right now. Check out the way the light hits the curve of the spine. I love looking at, at that. There's something about that. I don't know what it is. It's like looking at a lava lamp or something. Just like mystifying. And we got the cops coming. There's some black shell on the inside too. That's a really nice Tony. I'm actually, maybe I shouldn't be, but I'm surprised how many people like the Tony over um, the Herbie, but I'm just so biased. I like the Herbie. And um, some of the other boot guys that have been uh, getting interviews with uh, have mentioned how much they love the Tony compared to some of the other stuff they've added. I find that really fascinating. It's, I, just find, I feel like there's um, everybody's got a little bit of a different taste for what they want in a wallet. So it's very interesting, and that's why we make a bunch of different wallets. So this is a black shell with a reverse interior. I like the way the reverse wears in. Um, it looks like we only have a couple more things before we get to the irregulars. So this is Colorate Marble Shell on the Capone. I think this is the last one that we did from a small batch, so these are now gone. <laughs> Me and the sirens in the video, we live in a city, we live in the city of Chicago, and we're like on a highway and two busy streets. So I think we get a lot of like hospital traffic. I'm not sure what it is. But you know, we're on an interstate <laughs> and in a city. So here's a all reverse. This is also a small batch component. This is an all reverse color rate. I really, really like this. I think there's a couple of these left. I'm not really sure. I know the marbled color rates are gone. Um, and then we have two um, two one shots to show you before we get into the irregulars. So this is black all reverse. On a one shot, we try to cut that ink stamp in there. That's cool. But check this out. Another blue wallet. This is the denim blue shell, and I really really like. Excuse me, the raw denim shell really really like how it starts off kind of matte but once you wear this in it gets brighter and shinier the transformation to me is you know the cool part about it so that's all the um i'm sorry again about the audio but that's all the some of the stuff that we're shipping out today let me flip back on our uh 10th anniversary logo and then we'll go through the irregulars if you have questions about any of the irregulars drop them in the chat and I can show you specific things that you're looking at, looking to pick up.
All right, Jim. So all the irregulars are on the table right now. And these are going up in an hour and 20 minutes on the site. And sorry again about the audio, guys. But Jim wants to see the black Dublin Capone. Let's do that. Where is that? in the stack of Capones, of course. So here's the black Dublin Capone. Let's take a closer look at this, why it might be bad. In fact, let me... All right. This one has like a like a little bit of a pleat right here that looks like part of the grain, but it's actually kind of like different than the grain. And I don't really see too much wrong with this, <laughs> although that's probably what it is right there. It's just like this weird sort of thing on the grain of this one. Let's look at the other side. I mean, it's pretty nice, irregular. Maybe there's something else I'm missing. It's subtle, but there's two little blems, like on the leather right there. It's not a really big deal. This one might... <laughs> we might be a little aggressive making this one an irregular. It's pretty nice. Uh, Jim also wants to see the whiskey. Oh, yeah. I know why you want to see that, Jim. <laughs> So here you go. That, that's pretty cool. And I know you like the peanut butter jelly. So that color eight on the inside here, the whiskey, that's pretty cool. You know, one of the first big, 10 years ago, since we're talking about an anniversary, 10 years ago we had um, our first big order from this Japanese customer and they are a retail store in, in Asia. And they ordered some Herbies, um, just sort of like um, black Dublin Herbies and, and then some shell Herbies. And those sold really well for them and they came back to us and wanted to do another round. And what they ended up doing, I still like. And they combined the whiskey and color eight together for a Herbie. And I believe it was color eight on top of whiskey um, and that was 10 years ago. <laughs> so they were doing cool color combos back then, you know, when we were just starting off. So here it is again, though. Like, I really like those two colors together. That's pretty sweet. Um, and anybody else that's here, I know I saw Michael wants to see something. Anybody else that's here, this is your chance to see some of the irregular stuff uh, before they get up on the site. Uh, Michael wants to see... Oh, Sean McGuire wants to see all reverse giant fox. Yeah, that's cool. You know, this is one. This is one that's going to wear in really, really well. Actually, I have a customer that sent um, a wallet back for me to look at. Let me show you that. So, check this out. This is a. Um, our customer name is Jeff G. This is a black all reverse Tony. Look how well the reverse was worn in. It's really, really, really glassy and bright and smooth. I think he polishes this. I don't know exactly what he's done, but he really likes this. But he wanted to show it to me. Um, but that's how the reverse wears in. And it's hard for me to even get it on camera. It's so bright and shiny. But that is what this fox is going to wear in to. You can see this starts like a little bit dull, but just the natural wear on it will give it this almost wet look. And uh, I'm really excited about his his Tony here. That looks really cool. So Sean, this is how the the color rate. That's how it's kind of kind of kind of going to wear in. It's going to get a little darker and brighter and shinier. It's very much matte now. It doesn't have much of any luster, and I think that's cool because I personally like a little bit of a transformation. 
and here's the inside. I don't know the story with this. This has like a weird quarter of inch stamp on the left side here. I don't know why we did that. I wonder if this was just a mess up and like, I don't know, we should have just made a new pocket on it. But I think that's the only irregularity on this one is like the placement of that. I think it's supposed to be in the center. So that's strange. <laughs> it's strange that it's there. That's a pretty cool Johnny the Fox. So this is the color HL. And when you flip it backwards, it kind of looks like this. And I'm sorry again for the audio, guys. I got I got work to do, obviously. It seems like I every time I turn on a live stream, I have an audio issue. And Michael Cruz wants to see the blue and ultraviolet bugs. So, there's two ultraviolet bugs, Mike, or Michael, excuse me. The, the Michael Cruz I know goes by Mike. So I'm going to habitually think you're my friend. But this is the ultraviolet. And again, there are two of these, and they're going to be on one product page. So, if you order one, just leave. Just put the order in and then message me and I can let you pick either one that you like. Um, and all the fo photos for both of them will be up so you can just like screenshot the photo of the one you want. Um, and then I can pick it. It looks like this one has like a tiny bit of a crooked stitch on the outside edge right there. It's pretty subtle. But they're pretty similar. Is the other ultraviolet? This one had. This is the one with that little like dot on it. I, it feels like a piece of finish or something, but I don't know what that is. And then Michael, you wanted to see uh, the blue. There's only one of these. So I think this was sometimes hard for me to see the colors uh, when I have this bright light right in my face. I think this is actually intense blue. Or maybe it's a denim blue. There was one item in here that's like the darker blue. But I believe this is the only blue bugs we have and it has a cool reverse interior. Uh, Sean, all right, who else, who else needs to see an item? Um, I'd match, this might be a good chance to snack some, some, some shell. There's a lot of options here. Um, some of the better deals, actually, I, I decided to put up, like, the small stuff is really inexpensive, like, half off. So, like, this key case in marbled black shell, it's a pretty deep scratch in the back, like, here. This is going to be pretty cheap, and it's a small piece, so I'm not really trying to make any money off of that. There are a few key fobs that are also going to be pretty heavily discounted. So there's a color four, a natural, and a whiskey key fob. Here's the whiskey. So those are going to be pretty cheap. If you want to, like, get your hands on some shell, those are probably going to be the... Those are going to go really fast because they're super cheap. I forget how much I put them up for, but it's like half off. So if you want to see what Shell's about, that might be a good opportunity. A key fob that experience is a little bit limited, but you can still use it. I like, that's why I like the one-shots. So this is an irregular one-shot. There's only one of these. But I like the one-shots because they're inexpensive for us to make. So I don't have to charge a lot for them, and you can use it as a wallet. So a lot of people have been enjoying the one-shots during the pandemic. Because you can't really use cash too much right now. So people will put a couple cards in here and drop them in their front pockets. Got their cops again. Uh, so the one shot might be a good way to get your hands on some shell to, to actually use it, um, which is why we did these. Um, you know, everything in this 
on the table right now is discounted, so there should be some good chance chances to pick up something. And a lot of people come to us for the shell, but the Dublin leather is really nice too. There's a lot of nice leathers in the world. <laughs> the shell seems to like overshadow most stuff, but check out this Dublin piece. No logo on this guy, and it's got a really intense green character. This is a cool Frank in black Dublin. There's also a garnet Frank. Looks like I can't really tell what's wrong. There's a, there's a scratch in the in the center here. Let's see if I can point that out. There's like a little scratch right here. Okay, uh, I should get back to what people want to see instead of me just going to show stuff. Uh, Mike, Mike L. Yeah, that the green one shot is uh, right here. It's pretty dark. I don't love this particular green shell. And then there's like a little blem on the back right here where my thumb is. But it is a piece of shell. And it's a dark, dark green. I just wish it was a little lighter. Something like the, the Kia shell, I tend to like a little bit more. Sometimes these dark colors just look a little too black, which I don't love. Um, two color eight valet trays in the Dublin Fat Herbie. All right, Aaron, I got you. So here's the uh, valet trays right here. So there are two of these, and these are also going to be on one product page. You'll notice the uh, the colors of the interiors. Like this one's a little bit more red, and they both have these mega intense brands on the back. So that's like a S, C, or something on the back, or like a part of a three. If you're not familiar with the shell valets that we do, they're such a huge piece of leather that I only want to sell them as irregulars. And this one is an irregular, but it has a huge brand in it. So I thought I would sell it as, as a special irregular. <laughs> but if I were to cut a normal piece of shell into such a huge pattern like this, I would have to charge a couple hundred bucks. And um, that just doesn't feel right to do. So I made a deal with Skip Horween. He trusts us to cut the stuff and be transparent about what we're doing. So he, he has some shells that have some issues in it. And then we make them into these valet trays for a little bit of a discount. And the, the way that I can justify it in my head is you, you do get a piece of shell. There's going to be some issues on the shell side here. But that's the part that's going to touch the table. So you shouldn't really have too many issues with it. If you just really, I mean, it looks super cool. I, I use a black shell, one of these, uh, at my desk at home. And I find it very useful for putting like pens and guitar picks and things like that. So there's one that's a little bit more red. And then there's this other one that's a lot lighter, a little bit more tan. And the more tan one, this also has, it's got that X or something in the back here. It's got like a XO or something, like a D. Sometimes these brands are hard to see. But there's like an X here and like a D or a C or something on the right side. And then you wanted to see the tan Dublin Fat Herbie. This her this Herbie that you're asking for is really neat. All right. It's a really nice piece of leather, actually. There's like a little scratch on the bottom here. I wonder how well that shows up. But the color and luster of this guy, just even the regular green characters look really, really nice. And then the inside's a little darker. It's like a little bit more chestnut, or the outside's like a little bit more yellowy orange. Um, so yeah, there's that scratch. There's sort of this like little scar and scratch on the outside. Some, like something like this is gonna fade away 
I might not even downgrade this normally, but it seems like there's a couple other very small things when combined together. It's just make it, you have to discount it. But this one's pretty nice too. Oh, there's a scratch in the inside. There's like a little healed scar uh, on the left. Let's see if I can show you that. It's like a dark scar that kind of goes right here. Sort of hard to show, isn't it? Here we go, right here. But otherwise, that's a pretty nice Herbie. Um, double in black is your favorite look. I like this one a lot. Actually, as much as I like our logo, it's like something kind of ninja about this one. It's pretty nice. Um, what's wrong with the Whiskey Shell Tony? Let's find out. Find it first. Oh, here it is. Huh. Well, let's take a look together. I see some minor stuff. Pretty nice. I mean, if I had to nitpick it, um, if I can get this to focus better. I didn't nitpick it. There's some like really dark or small little dark pieces that look like melted wax on the top of this. There's got to be more than that that's wrong with this. I don't know. There's some more little dark spots down here. Uh, Let's do this. Metro. Not really. Not a whole lot wrong with this guy. It seems like there might be something to do with this top section here. It's like, I can't really tell what's going on with the shell on the left card holders here. It's almost like it looks creased, but it's not. It's flat. I'm not sure what's going on there. And then the other concept could be, no, that doesn't, I wouldn't reduce the price for that. There's gotta be something else wrong with this that I'm not seeing. Some minor little dents in the outside back here, which again, might not be uh, visible. There's like a little, little dent right here. And then like a little something, small stuff, like a lot of, or like a, Maybe five little things. So that's the Whiskey Tony. Oh, Jesus wanted, you wanted the brand. Yeah, we can make them the other way. If you don't mind it a little bit more rugged. But like this Black Ballet has a pretty intense brand right there. But yeah, you can we can flip it so um, they sort of fold, fold this way. And you can tray it <laughs> like that. So the reverse side will touch the table. Here's the other black ballet. It's like a big O. Kind of looks like a, I don't know. It just looks like a big O. <laughs> it could be a D. There's some little like dents in the leather. All right, what else do you guys want to see? There's not a whole bunch that we didn't just show you. Um, I wanted to show you some, some of these. I didn't look at a lot of the uh, bugs and Tonys. This this um, Tony the Ant here was really interesting to me. It's like the inside is the most intense marbling that I've seen. Or in the outside, it's just like very subtle. And I noticed when I was taking the photos of this guy, it looks a lot more interesting in the photos. But this light hat on the right, this light section here, the whole right side of this exterior is much lighter than the left. So it's like you get this gradient from dark green to light green on the right, which is kind of neat. And I don't know how well that shows up. Maybe we can blast the uh, camera here. Maybe not. 
see if the little lighter. It's pretty light. <laughs> pretty bright. So this one has sort of like another little dent on the inside right here. Jim says if it doesn't make Phil 100% gold standard, he makes them a regular. Yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, we don't want you to get a wallet and send it back to us. <laughs> so we figure it's better to be up front and tell you what's wrong with it before you get it. Because um, we figured it's not a very nice experience to get something and go, oh, what is that? <clears throat> um, and it can be problematic for us. Like, we know a little bit too much about the leather. Um, so we tend to, over, like, how to describe it? We, we tend to, like, see every little thing. And sometimes it's something that nobody will care about. So, um the thing about leather is it's not plastic, so there's always something that's inconsistent. It's just whether or not, like, we would be happy with it on our stuff. And even some of these, like, all these are regulars I would wear and not have an issue. But if I bought it new and it was sold to me as, like, this is supposed to be as good as it gets, uh, I'd be bummed out by, like, a dent. Or this one has, like, a little smudge of, um, let's see if I can show that. This one has, like, a little dark spot right here so i'd be like a little bummed out about that but i would still wear it so it's sometimes tricky but this is the natural shell tony and here's a uh i am you you also have another name, I think, and I got you, I sent you an order for that um, reverse ultraviolet Apple Watch band today, I think. Here's a natural Chrome Excel, Tony. This one's also really nice. I like the Chrome Excel in Dublin um, for different reasons. The Chrome Excel is like really rich and waxy and oily. It's really, really rich. When I first started working at the tannery, I asked like, what's Chrome Excel all about? Why is it so popular? It was always described as like the Cadillac of leather to me. And I didn't really get it at the time, but I kind of get it now. It's just very, very tough and super um, oily and waxy and rich. So it's like very intense. This one has some problems on the inside right here. I don't really like that dark spot. Uh, could we see the Frank Amaretto? <laughs> and Mike is cool. Uh, yeah, I won't forget that then, Mike. Um, I'm glad that you want to see this one because it's my favorite shell color, and this irregular is not that bad. Check this out. Let me get a better focus for you here. So, Frank, Amaretto shell. It's really, really interesting how the color shifts on this guy, which is one of the reasons I like it. I like that it goes from orange to red. So like, look at this bottom card slot here, like definitely looking brown and red there. And as I tilt it, they invert. So now the top part is brown and red. That's crazy. <laughs> so I like Amaretto for that color depth. And I also like that it's just sort of lighter orangey tan. And this is just a nice piece of shell. So there's a couple scratches, some scratches here on the left that let's see how well I can show you that and anybody that's just coming in sorry about the audio I know it sounds kind of scratchy so there's some scratches right there speaking of scratches and there's like one little scratch on the back here it's not the best but amaretto's really nice I really like that color. I'm going back to the Tonys. We're going to get through all these, but if you have other questions, stuff that you want to see better detail of, I won't do that for you. This is the intense blue one. Okay. 
I think I may have misspoke earlier. This is the really dark blue that we call intense blue. And it's on the tone of the ant. I noticed this one has this like little gouge from beveling right here, which might have been something that I did. It's not the greatest. Yeah, Mike, the scratches are interesting. Like, they tend to blend in just with normal use. So that's why something like a shell, irregular, even like in the footwear, if you find somebody selling irregular or um, B-stock footwear and shell, you can usually fill in those scratches pretty easily. I could probably do it here also on this particular piece. You kind of can always see it a little bit you can sort of mitigate them and minimize them um, by filling it in with a little bit of wax. But the thing is, is when you wear this, it's gonna accumulate some of that wear anyways. So they kind of blend into your style. Yeah, the dark blue really looks black, doesn't it? I think I have another black. Yeah, so here, this is, I like this demo here. So this is a black shell Tony which is obviously black. But if I didn't show you that and I told you that this was black, you would agree. <laughs> but when I put them together, you can kind of see, you know, this one's like a little bit more navy as opposed to the other one. So it's tough. So that's why we moved away from the intense blue and trying to move more towards the denim blue. And here's that black shell. You're definitely going to scratch it. Some people aren't used to not putting their keys in their pocket with their wallet. I don't suggest putting anything abrasive next to the leather. I mean, unless you love that look, it's going to really, really wear it in. Stuff's not invincible, um, but it's meant to be worn. So unless you're trying to do that, I wouldn't intentionally put my keys in the same pocket. Here's the classic color eight. That's a really, really nice shell. really even see what's wrong on this. Oh, it's crooked on the left side here. See how that stitch kind of veers off? Let's see, Maybe it's easier to see on the outside. It's just not straight. It's kind of hard to see. You can see it a little easier here. Not consistent. Here's the vertical bugs. It seemed like people really like the vertical card slots. This is the color eight Chrome Excel, which actually that would be a good comparison too. It's the Chrome Excel in my left hand, the shell in, the, in my right. The Chrome Excel is a little bit more red, and the shell's like a little bit more brown. But the essence of of the color eight is in here. If I remember correctly, this one had some stitching issues also. Oh, these little gaps in the, on the card holders. But I kind of like, if nobody buys this one, I might actually use this because I haven't really worn one of the, uh, the vertical card slots before. I kind of like this one. And the last Tony here. Is this, oh, this is the color four. So Dale from uh, almost our vintage feature uh, picked up one of these and it's his favorite one now. <laughs> that was the guy I was talking about earlier that said they really like the Tony. That's a really nice piece of color four. This is a little less red than a lot of the color four I see. It's like a little bit more caramel on the outside. And the inside has a little bit more of that what I would say is more of like a true color four, a little bit more brown and red. This is like as light as a color four gets on the outside. And, and it really depends on what angle you look at it. Because some angles it's light, some angles it's dark. It's kind of tricky. Like there, it's light. And there, it's dark. It's 
And I know that the light is on my left side here. So see how it's light at this angle, even though I'm facing it at the light? If I flip it upside down, now it's dark. <laughs> and that's because these shells are directional. So depending on what angle you look at it, there's fibers in the shell that point one direction that you know, will make it look light or dark, kind of like a suede works. Uh, what do you say we skim through these foxes and then um, I'm going to call it a day here. But if anybody has questions about any of the irregulars that wants to see them in a little bit more detail first, because these are going up in 45 minutes, you can see a little bit more detail here first. Just let me know what you want to see. This is a black shell fox. This one has like a little, I don't know what this is, imperfection in the shell sort of right here that I don't love. What's up, Cliff? Sorry about the audio, Cliff, and everybody else. Bear with me. I didn't want to cancel a live stream for some audio. But if you want to see any regulars, definitely let me know. Uh, here's one that I really like. I, I am not making these right now, but uh, I really like this black and teal combo. And I've done a poor job explaining how well the teal ages. I should get... I should wear one and show you, but the way the Latigo from Horween wears in, it's really, really nice. Actually, let me grab my keys. You might, um, you might have heard, you might have seen those one shots in the Regatta Blue. I made this key fob like 10 years ago in that same Regatta Blue Latigo. Check out how awesome it's worn in. I'll give you a zoom in. Obviously, I haven't polished this or done anything. I haven't babied this. Um, but I love the way that the Latigo wears in. It's brighter and shinier. And it has like this sort of heritage look already. I guess already. It's been 10 years. But the colors faded a little bit. It's really, really cool. So I like the Latigo. And uh, this teal Latigo here is going to wear in kind of like that. So I actually like to do more Latigo. Latigo's been made for 100 years at Horween, but uh, it's got a generic leather name in the name Latigo. There's other tanneries that make that same named leather, but the Horween Latigo is really, really nice. Um, so I don't think it gets enough to attention, but it's uh, I love it. So the teal on the outside with the black on the inside, I always really liked that color combo. Uh, and Jim, I can't, I can't, I think you're hopefully joking. I'm not going to be able to do a head start for you or anybody else. I'm trying to, to keep it fair. You know what? This might be the nicest piece of shell in the whole, the whole, uh, collection here. Everything on the table, this garnet shell box, this is about a nice, as nice of a piece of shell that I've ever seen. Just take a look at how sleek that is. And this is the most red color that Horween makes. This is one of the nicer pieces in here, in my opinion. I also like that we have that horse hide interior to keep the bulk down. So even though there's all these layers of leather, it's still really, really thin. So again, like people have sort of migrated away from the horse hide interiors from us in favor of the shell interiors, but I still really like the horse hide interiors because they're thinner. They're just punchier. <laughs> I'm glad that you're joking, Jim. That teal fox is pretty sweet. I mean, I don't know if you saw my key fob there, but it really, really, really wears in great. So this one is another one of those things there's like this little discoloration going this direction on the outside and there's another one on this side. That's not the greatest, but that's gonna wear in really quickly. This is gonna get darker and I would suggest beating it up. I think it will look cooler if you beat it up. So that's a cool fox. And those, you know, most of the stuff we do is shell, so it's really expensive. The non-shell stuff is equally nice. It's just, you know, half the price or a third of the price. This one's also really cool. I always liked the same thing with the uh, garnet. I've always liked the, the sort of red and mock 
together. So this has that garnet on the outside with the mock horse hide on the inside interior. Mock is just a color name, M-O-C. It's like a light sand color. We've always really liked this combination and the blue, in particular the blue. Really like the blue and mock together. I think that's really neat. This one is almost extra thin. This feels, feels very, very thin. And that's because we try to make them as thin as possible with the uh, with the horse head interiors. Oh yeah, we don't put any liners in here, so everything on all the wallets are just leather and thread and you know wax that we've finished on it. So there's really nothing to rip. We actually have changed the wallets over the years to make them better, and there's subtle things like reinforcing the stitches in certain points, and then not stitching around the outside here because this is where wallets tend to break. And when, you know, we don't thin down any of the leather, so it tends to not rip. Usually you see wallets kind of rip um, in the corners and all the stress points like here. We don't see a lot of that. It's very rare to, that we get a wallet uh, that's broken, but if they do break, I just fix them. All right, we're gonna finish up with the Herbie. And somebody already asked about this Herbie. It's cool enough to bring back. This is the English Hand Dublin. It's a pretty nice piece uh, for an irregular. There's also this color, Amaretto, that reminds me of the English Hand color. So English Hand on the right, Amaretto on the left. This is a little bit lighter of an Amaretto. They kind of range a bit. I just love this color. Some like weird marks on the left here. Let's see. Let's see how well I'll be able to show this. See these little marks? I don't know what that is. It's very subtle. But this is a nice Herbie. If you want to check out Amaretto, that might, or a Herbie, this might be a good one. Uh. Were you asking about whiskey? This is whiskey. Yeah, people, um, I think people come to us for the cordovan, so they generally want to ask for a shell interior on the Fox, which is really, really hard to make a shell interior on the John of the Fox. And uh, that's why we started, we custom made that horse hide from Horween for the Foxes. but. You know, again, people come to us for the shell, so we're gonna we try to make it work. Um, and it's been hard to do, but you know, the last five, six years we've gotten really good at it. And it's basically, the more leather I buy and collect, the easier it is to find thin stuff. So here's the whiskey. That's take a look at how the color shifts. Like, look at the big panel versus the small. So the big panel is light. The top is kind of darker brown. But when I turn it, they invert. So now the bottom is darker than the top. That's always been so fascinating to me. Pretty nice. There's also natural shell. <sighs> Sorry to make it difficult, Mike. You can, can't really go wrong. And there, you know, we're always gonna be able to make new stuff. So don't sweat it, man, you know? If something really speaks to you, grab it. Um, if not, there might be something else another time. Um, but if there's multiple things screaming at you, just grab one, you know? You get, you get some joy out of that one piece and really wear it hard. Hey, Red Cube, you, you picked a stream and you got it here, but the audio sucks. <laughs> Sorry, man. So this natural shell is also really nice. There's like one little dark spot right here. But otherwise, that's pretty nice. Here's a weird one. This is a cobalt blue Dublin, and the grain on the exterior is really crazy. Let's see if I can do a close up. So, this is really dark blue, but the undertone is like kind of light. It's like more aqua blue underneath. And the 
grain is really intense on this guy. You know, the audio sucks. It's not you, it's me. Bad audio. I was trying to not talk for a while. Here's a black shell Herbie. Oh, this is this is like one of the more unique pieces. There's denim blue on the outside, blue stitching, reverse natural with blue stitching on the inside, double Orbean stamp. That's pretty different. So this is one of the more unique pieces. Cobalt blue, it's interesting that you're saying supple. It's round. All the Dublin leather from a from, uh, from Ashland, all the Dublin leather from Morwain is veg tanned. And veg tanned leathers, generally speaking, have a little bit more bite to them. Uh, see how this isn't, it's like got enough stand to it. It's holding up kind of firm, even if I shake it. You know, and it kind of, if I sort of flex it, it kind of stays. So it's firm and soft at the same time. It's got this really unique thing that a lot of veg tan leathers have. So it's not super, super supple, like a, you know, like a liner for a shoe, but it's got a nice bite to it. I like the green on this one, and it's a subtle blue. It's just a really cool green, but it's still a uh, regular. This one, speaking of green, check this out. I guess you've already seen these on the preview video, but the natural chrome excel here has an insane character. I don't know what that is. I think these are actually, we call them fat wrinkles in, in tannery, fat wrinkles. But they look cool. And they're random. Here's the same thing on the inside. The chrome excel also has that sort of firm and soft thing going on. Like it wants to snap back to my hand there, which is neat. All right, the last one. Oh, you got cobalt blue. This is ultraviolet. Uh, I think you wanted an Apple Watch band in the reverse ultraviolet. So something I was going to do for you, and I, was, I wanted to talk to you about this. You can see the reverse side here is a little cleaner. You're probably gonna want more dye splatter to make that reverse ultraviolet worth it. Um, so before you pay for your invoice, let's make a note on the order if you want extra dye splatter, or it's gonna look like this facing the world, and it's gonna be this touching your wrist. This one doesn't really have any very much dye splatter, they're random. But the dye splatter on the ultraviolet is like very vivid, like this spot right here. Oh my God. See how it's like a pink? You usually can get more like splatter. So if you want more splatter, we, we can do that. You mu I assume you want that, but I didn't wanna just guess. So let's talk about it. Mr. Yoga. Uh, oh, there's one more thing and we'll wrap it up. Machine Gun Jack. There's one machine gun jack in here. This is a product that we don't really make. It's a standard thing. We still can do it. This is also an intense blue, so it's a little darker. But if you're into card holders, this was a card holder that Nick Horween and myself designed like nine years ago. Nick really liked the idea of using one big symmetrical piece of leather and flipping it, you know, st uh, stitching it down, making it a card holder. So that's what we did here. It doesn't really work well for cash, which is my only gripe with it. Although I hate cash, I don't like using cash. Uh, you can fit a bunch of cards in here. And this was a lot of people's favorite wallet from us for a while, so I'm thinking about bringing it back. But you can fit cash folded in thirds into it. So something to think about. It's a little bit more of a snap, uh, obviously a snap wallet. I don't necessarily like 
snaps, but for this design, it makes a lot of sense. So your stuff just doesn't fall out. I find snaps to be like a little annoying. They have to like press down every time. But Machine Gun Jack, if you're into this, there's one irregular going up in a half hour. And there are, and you know, we can make it. So if you want one, I can make it for you. And we had the same, we had a bunch of people that were into the um, the JR Fold wallet that have been messaging me after the, the last private stock sale. So basically, I could, anything you see, I can make it again. It's just going to take me a little bit of time. So if there's something you're into that's not available on the site, we can make it. But I'm sorry again about the audio. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, guys, and, and get this uh, event launched. So stick around for uh, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain Time. <laughs> and I don't know where you are in the world, but uh, just look up 5 Central. <laughs> and that's when all these will be up. If you have any questions between now and then, and you want information about any of these, just email me and I can get to you. My email address is phil at ashlandleather.com. I'll, I'll have an eagle eye on that for the next 20 minutes. Because um, again, a lot of these irregulars go kind of quickly. So if you're eyeballing a few and you're not really sure like which one you like more, just let me know in the next 20 minutes so we can figure it out together. But thanks for checking it out, guys. Sorry about the uh, terrible audio. I'm going to flip you back to the uh, potential 10-year anniversary logo. Um, but thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys later.